Good morning, everyone. We're having another blessed time in the Lord this morning, and we just thank God for another day. We praise him that we can come before him yet again to learn more and more about him. And uh, many of you have been informed that this is a time that we either give a Bible lesson or an evangelistic message. And most times I give evangelistic messages, but today it will be more of a lesson, but I do have some things that will encourage you and I hope you will be blessed. So as you can see on the screen, for those that are watching, and for those who have heard, um, the topic today is Jesus, our wonderful counselor. How awesome is that? So listen, some may think of psychology when they think of a counselor. And some may think of psychology as beginning with Sigmund Freud, who invented modern psychotherapy late in the 19th century. Please be informed that there have been many counselors throughout history, but Jesus is the best psychologist in my opinion. In fact, the Bible refers to him as the wonderful counselor. Now, I am in no way suggesting you shouldn't seek professional help if you need it. I am, however, admonishing that you seek the wonderful counselor, Jesus, above all. If you choose to seek professional help, please let it be additional. So let me tell you, Jesus understands everything about the human soul, the mind or spirit. This is also known as the psyche. If any of you know anything about psychology, you've heard of that. So based on my reading, this is where we're going to get into the word of God. The Psalms in the book of, in, well, in Psalms, it reveals Jesus as the Lord who counsels us. He fulfills all the Psalms to perfection, their prophecies, the life that is sanctified and conducive to more well-being in, in those scriptures. The New Testament writer said that Jesus fulfilled Psalm 16. Referring to Jesus, it says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Psalm 16 and 7. So Jesus' mission is to care for the brokenhearted, the downtrodden, those that are in prison, and really all those that are in great need. And I, let me add, because this will help many who are in the helping profession, all those that are in the helping profession, and especially every Christian, should adopt Jesus' mission statement. His personal mission can be found in Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Luke 4, 18 um, through 19, and that's also from Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. According to Christianity.com, Wonderful Counselor is the first title referring to the Messiah found once in the Bible in Isaiah's prophecy, that's Isaiah 9 and 6. It was a promise of hope to Israel amid the Assyrian invasion around 740 BC of the common savior who will deliver his people and establish his kingdom. The verse this verse describes both humanity and divinity of Christ. The prophecy finds it, it finds its fulfillment consummation at his uh, at, at the coming when he comes during the rapture. The Hebrew word for wonderful counselor is paloyoes. I looked that up. Um, so hopefully I'm pronouncing that exactly like it should be. Give me a minute, something just popped up on my screen and it's covering my notes. Just a moment. Okay, here we go. All right, so that is pronounced, Wonderful Counselor is also referred to as Palo Yoes. The first term means a miracle, a marvel, a wonder, which indicates so comprehensible, inexplicable. The second term, Yoes, means to advise, counsel, devise, 
per proposed. Both definitions combined reveal that the child will be miraculously born to become an amazing advisor who marvelously works in all things for God's purpose, Romans 8 and 28, because the Holy Spirit dwells in him with all wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and honor to God. That's Isaiah 11 and 2. So according to GodQuestions.com, that Isaiah calls the Messiah, the wonderful counselor, indicates the kind of character this coming king has. This word wonderful in the passage literally means incomprehensible. The message will cause us to be full of wonder. The word is much weightier than the way it's used in normal conversation today. We say things are wonderful if they are pleasant or lovely, but Jesus is wonderful in a way that is boggling to the mind. The same word for wonderful is used in Judges 30. Samson's father asked the Lord what his name was. The angel of the Lord responded, why do you ask my name seeing it is wonderful? In other words, why do you ask my name since it's beyond your understanding? So sometimes we're trying to comprehend Jesus, but it, it, oftentimes we, we really just can't perceive totally, um, we, we can't totally conceive of who he really is because he's just that wonderful. So let me go on to tell you that Jesus demonstrated his wonderfulness in various ways when he was on earth, beginning with his conception in the womb of a virgin Mary. How wonderful is that? We know that is beyond comprehension. And we can find that in Matthew 1 and 23. Now, let's discuss what makes Jesus a wonderful counselor. Unlike many counselors today, Jesus didn't always wait for people to come to him. Instead, he went out to them and availed himself. It did not always have to be some designated place for him to assist, such as the synagogues and the temple. He also availed himself where the streets, at a wedding, when he was walking by the lake, when he was at a friend's house, in gardens, by a well, and out in the uh, desert wilderness, and many other places. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful counselor who will come to your rescue no matter where you are? Number two, Jesus is a mindful listener. An excellent example of Jesus being a wonderful counselor is when he used mindful listening skills to draw the Samaritan woman at the well so that she could be transformed, connect with God and experience his love. Jesus was so approachable that he engaged in a personal conversation with her. He was an active listener who offered love as well as wisdom and guidance where many would have shunned her because of her sin and shame. But with his uh, friendly conversation, he embraced her and shocked her with being gracious instead of rejecting her. What a wonderful counselor, which this is optimistic. Many caregivers and many health professionals over time become negative because they have to deal with so much stress, people's agony and sin, and sometimes it becomes overwhelming. So they themselves become negative. If they don't get back on track, sometimes it's not really, it doesn't end up being a good thing. But Jesus saw the divine potentiality in people. Consider this. He said, with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19 and 16. Uh, and according to Soul Shepherd and Jesus saw that Simon was the vacillator that could become Peter the rock. He saw that John, the angry son of thunder, could become the beloved disciple. So let me tell you, any of you that, that have the gift of counseling or in the helping profession, don't allow how many times you've had to deal with these problems to make you become negative. Let's use Jesus' example and, and continue to know that with God, all things are possible. If we continue to tell ourselves that, then we can continue to be optimistic, see the potentiality in people, no matter how long we've been praying, no matter how long we've dealt with their problems, we can keep them encouraged just like Jesus did. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Also, next point, Jesus is not judgmental. He didn't judge the woman caught in adultery. This is so important for, for uh, counselors and, and anyone that, that considers themselves uh you know, just wanting to give advice. I mean, you, we have many people on here that 
that are saved. And oftentimes people come to us for advice. So let this be our example, just like our wonderful counselor. He didn't judge the woman caught in adultery. When a counselor responds like Jesus, it makes them feel safe. It makes the, the, the client feel safe to share their weakness and pain. When you have sinned, especially when it is exposed publicly, the last thing you need is for someone to judge you. The religious leaders wanted to stone this woman to death, but Jesus places his body between them and her to shelter her and shield her from the counselor. Furthermore, he confronted them and made them aware of their hypocrisy by writing on the ground and saying, well, I didn't say exactly what he said, but he said to them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast the first stone at her, according to John 8 and 7. As a result of Jesus' confrontation, they had to flee and leave her alone. He then turned to her and let her know, basically, look, your accusers are gone. I don't condemn you. You're free to go now, but just go and sin no more, according to John 8, 10 through 11. And that, again, leads me to my next point. Jesus offered the truth, which in turn will set people free. John 8 and 32 says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. His spirit is called the spirit of truth, according to John 14, 17, 16, and 13. Jesus spread God. God's word, which is if received and applied, it results in the change for the better, such as a greater awareness of what is spiritually appropriate and healthy, which leads to healing, deliverance, and overall transformed lives. That's what counselors do. He can give, but Jesus himself, he can give new life spiritually and naturally so including freeing people from spiritual death as well as natural death and that he resurrected the dead in the bible and ultimately resurrect will resurrect believers when he returns he frees us from the dread of death and despair by providing hope of eternal life what a wonderful counselor some people don't believe in heaven or hell but if we believe the truth it shall set us free we have a wonderful counselor to look forward to um a wonderful counselor who gives us a wonderful life to look forward to. Yes, we will have trials here on earth, but Psalm 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. So we shall be delivered. God, God's word is true. And 4 and 6 says, my people perish from a lack of knowledge. Thanks, thanks to God that Jesus informed us that the truth shall set us free so we don't have to perish. And with that knowledge, we can apply and claim what is rightfully ours, such as the abundant life that only a wonderful counselor can promise. According to John 10 and 10, what other counselor can offer such great rewarding life? How awesome is that? In the presence of Jesus is healing. That's my next point. Over and over in the Bible, we see where the healing power came from the presence of Jesus's body. Surely many of you know the story of the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 long years, who pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and was healed. Mark 5, 24 through 34. Additionally, large crowds pressed in on his body, many places that he went. You can find that in Luke 6. The people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and he lets us know that Jesus healed and delivered uh not just the the uh the body but he also delivered the minds of many and he can heal physically emotionally mentally and spiritually you think about how he cast out devils and, and people's minds were set free and and um again he uh he would touch people and and um it would say that the spirit would leave them that was oppressing them don't you know that spirits live around us to try to oppress our minds? When we're Holy Ghost filled, we can't be possessed by any devil or demon, but, but spirits live around us to try to oppress our mind because that is what their duty is. And Jesus can heal the mind when, when a spirit is trying to oppress the mind. How awesome is that that we have a counselor that is so powerful to heal the mind, set free and deliver anything that we're going through? All right, next thing I want to bring out, Jesus 
studied people carefully, really knew and understood them. Oftentimes, many mental health professionals today feel so pressured to come up with a diagnosis and have so many clients to see that they will try to sum them up in just a few minutes and barely know anything about them, which often leads to misdiagnosis. Well, thank God for our wonderful counselor that isn't like that. Jesus knew what was in each person. John 2 and 25 says he discerned their thoughts and perceived their faith in God or the lack of it. Matthew 9, 2 through 4, he knew their deepest emotions according to Mark 12, 15. Furthermore, the wonderful counselor gets to the root of the problem and never misdiagnoses. Jesus can see everyone's true need. Consider this conversation, consider his conversation with the rich young ruler. This man appears to be zealous and appears uh, very earnest about making the right decision, um, but he doesn't have peace. So this made an assessment and he got to the root of the problem. The real problem he let him know is not that he's not obeying God's commands, but that he's holding on to his possessions. That was the real problem. So Jesus had to minister to that need. He uh, basically let him know, uh, well, it was believed, let me say this first, it was believed that even his wanting to make righteous decisions was mainly for his own ego. But Jesus lovingly, but sternly reveals to him what his real problem is, which pretty much was that he was holding on too tight to his wealth and it was affecting his soul. So thank God for a wonderful counselor that can discern so well that he can get to the root of the problem. And there can be a change if we willingly receive the assessment and direction for our treatment plan. So. If you think about it, oftentimes people shun people who are alcoholics, people who are, are very promiscuous, people that are homosexuals. But guess what? We don't know why these people chose what they chose. There's a root to this problem. Some people that are promiscuous or even homosexual, sometimes they were molested and it led them to become this way. Now, I'm not condoning what... Um, what they're doing. And then, and then some of those who are alcoholics, it's not because they think it tastes so good all the time. They're trying to find a way of an escape. And so all these things that I just mentioned, these people are trying to find a way of an escape a lot of times. It's not that they're just so, you know, just so extremely addicted. They got to have it, got to have it because they just want it, want it, want it. It's because there's a root to the problem. And we have to get to the root of the problem when we're trying to help these people. And when we can get to that root, we can help people just like Jesus did. So he's an awesome, awesome example. Thank God. What better counselor than Jesus? All right, let's move on. Jesus restores the fallen. Many come to Jesus who are vulnerable and often they're weak, wounded, or fallen. We know many counselors that have to deal with this type of thing. Jesus is that wonderful counselor that heals and restores people. He was in such great despair, but Jesus sought him out. He engaged in conversation with him and reminded Peter how much he loved him. Although Peter had failed so terribly, he still had so much potential and wonderful things to offer in Jesus' eyes. Jesus recognized there was still good in him. Don't you know he does that with us? What restoration for Peter's self-esteem and Jesus reinstated him to ministry leadership according to John 21. Furthermore, Jesus promotes the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not only does Jesus reconcile but he gives us the power to declare his great message and minister to others so they will have a restored relationship with God through Jesus, the wonderful counselor. When we accept the call to be ministers of reconciliation, we act as peacemakers just as Jesus. What a wonderful counselor that can impart his 
love and his power as he did. What other counselor can do such a marvelous wonder? Christ was an ambassador for God and he made a way for us to be ambassadors as well. Second Corinthians 5 and 20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Second Corinthians says, one Second Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 says, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Look at what God has given us, what Jesus has placed in us. We, he comforts us so we can comfort other people. What a blessing that is. And so shepherding sums it up and says, Paul said, we know God is truly a caring God to us who gushes forth with endless abundant comfort and compassion for because he is the God of Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, as I said. This leads me to stress my next point. Jesus is very compassionate. Mark 6, 34 says, and Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were a sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. It didn't matter whether they were sick or well, hungry or full, poor or rich, he, they, whether they were his family or strangers, sinners or religious, he was compassionate towards all. That sounds like a wonderful counselor to me. Praise God. And also the spirit of Jesus is a counselor or a comforter. The Holy Spirit or known as the Paracletus is a counselor, a guide, a comforter, helper, advocate, strengthener. He is the spirit of Jesus and he lives inside the believer. He is gentle with us and he guides us into life-giving truth according through 17. Romans 8 and 26 says, in the same way, the spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Isn't it wonderful that when we don't know exactly what to say or even express our deepest emotions, the Holy Spirit will intercede for us so that we can find great relief. How loving and caring is that? What an awesome blessing that our wonderful counselor is to us. All right, we're moving on to the next point. Our wonderful counselor assures us that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. All those that are weary and heavy laden can come to Jesus for rest. In fact, Jesus, he carried the burden so that we don't have to carry it. He knows how much we can handle and won't let us be tempted above what we're able. A way of escape will be made. Gotquestions.org states, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Spirit who works in our lives, Christ, thereby making the yoke of Jesus easy and his burden light. The life lived by faith is much a lighter yoke and much easier burden to carry than the heavy and burdensome yoke of self-righteousness under which some continually strive to make themselves acceptable, acceptable to God through works. Also, a life of faith relieves us from the heaviness we would normally have if we doubt or worry. When we put on our trust in Jesus, the wonderful counselor, he helps us to rest and have great peace. And we can walk more freely, lighthearted, lighthearted and we can hold on to, to the, the promise that he's going to be with us and carry our burdens. And that is what a wonderful counselor does for us in this life. All right, Jesus, the wonderful counselor will spend precious time with you. I love this one. Jesus took the time to labor with his disciples, teaching them God's word, how to minister and how to fast and pray. He asked questions. He listened to 10 of them. He took the time to even sometimes use parables to make sure they understood clearly. He allowed them to ask questions and he responded lovingly, yet sometimes sternly. We can be assured he will teach us and also lead us in prayer. He wants us to spend time with him and seek him for the wisdom and the direction. James 1 and 5 says, if you lack 
If you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. So know that Jesus wants to spend precious time with you. He wants you to rise early and seek him early. The Bible says that uh, they that seek him shall find him. So he tells us to seek him early and we shall find him. And when we do that, we can get ahead of the enemy's plan and our lives can be so much better because it relieves us of the stress of, 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 of what we normally would face because we didn't pray. But when we rise early and we pray and we spend that prayer, precious time with Jesus. You, he, can con, he can console you of whatever is bothering you. You can command your day because you're spending that time with him and you're speaking things into existence. And you know that your life is going to turn out differently because of that precious time that you spend with him. And he in turn spends with you when he encourages you. So let me say, what do we now know about Jesus? He was known as a wise teacher and a miracle worker according to Acts 10 and 38. His teaching was astonishing in authority and wisdom. Additionally, he has authority to forgive sins. What other counselor can do that? He is our redeemer. He is the resurrection and life, which is what we all should search for. Jesus is the perfect revelation of God, according to John 1 and 18. And he knows everything about everyone, according to John 2, 24 through 25. This makes him the wonderful counselor. We can be encouraged knowing that according to Romans 8, 34, Jesus sits at at the right hand of God for us. Our wonderful counselor empathizes with us. Hebrews 4 and 15 says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Don't you know he understands what you go through daily so that he can be touched with your infirmities. He can empathize with you. He's on the right hand of, of, of God and he's making intercession for you. He's praying for you. He's being your advocate. He is standing in the gap for you because he loves you so much. What other counselor can do that? Jesus is our wonderful counselor. He causes all things to work together for our good. We must constantly seek help, comfort, and guidance from our wonderful counselor. We must be grateful that along with these, he gives power to overcome obstacles and sin. He gave us the Holy Ghost to help us through all of our problems and to overcome sin, to resist all evil. Because of the sword of the spirit, we can resist evil. having a victorious and wonderful counselor offers what great peace what hope and joy it is to have a counselor such as him and ultimately as i close when the rapture comes on that glorious day of adjudication all the world will see our wonderful counselor and we the believers will be rescued from the troubles of this world forever and ever and ever there is no other counselor in the world like the one we have our only the one and only wonderful counselor, Jesus Christ. I hope this has blessed you. I had so much to say, but for the sake of time, I had to try to condense it. You may think of some other ways that Jesus has been a wonderful counselor to you or even mentioned in the Bible, but this is what I wanted to share with you. So remember, there is no other counselor in the world like our one and only Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor. God bless you back in the hands of prophet Johnny. One last thing. He did tell me if God wanted to use me prophetically, that was fine. Now, let me tell you, I don't have what people would consider this very deep word, not this morning. Sometimes it happens, but I'm glad um, prophet Johnny mentioned that, uh, that he, he told me to remind the people um, about loving your neighbor. This was something that Jesus taught. And in counseling, we have to remember to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So when we allow ourselves to love our neighbors like we love ourselves, we can, we can treat people right. We won't go around betraying people, lying on people, being jealous of people. We, we treat them the way we want to be treated. Now, now most people don't want to hurt themselves. So because we don't want to hurt ourselves, we, we make a special effort to be kind to people. And we should esteem other people uh, more highly than ourselves sometimes. I know sometimes in families, you know, um, the, the parent will, will give their children um, 
more than what they had because they esteem them so highly and, and they, they see how great and important they are. So we should see each other as, as great and important and love one another like our, count, like our wonderful counselor did. And we can have a better life and, and be free of, of, of all of these, this jealousy and all of this uh, hatred and, and, and wanting to hurt people just because we, you know, Know, sometimes people just don't they may, and they may see something about you they think uh you have more blessings than they do but let our counselor our wonderful counselor be an example to us of how to treat people and we will have a much better life be free from all of the toil and torment that we face when we uh don't do god's will that's the word that god gave me last night and i thank prophet um Johnny for bringing to my attention that I could share that. So um, that was just pretty much a word actually that he gave me. So uh, we can expect better lives if we do what Jesus word said. Let's love our neighbors as we love ourselves. God bless you back in the hands of God.